You see, you don't get testimonies because you've been in a place for a long time. If you stop doing what you're supposed to do, the testimony will not come. There are things to do to cause a testimony to come. One of the biggest wastes of time, and I see it in the lives of so many people, is waiting for a prophecy to come to pass. That is a lot of people. They are waiting for prophecy to come to pass. Waiting for prophecy. You are wasting your time. You are wasting your life. You don't wait for a prophecy to come to pass. What do you do? You make it come to pass. That man said, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be what? To be saved. So there's something to do to activate salvation. There's something to do. You see, this Christianity that we're walking here, it requires personal responsibility. Personal responsibility. And so there are things that you can do. There are things that you can do. There are dimensions, new dimensions you need to move to in God. So when you come to a service, pay attention to the instructions. Pay attention to the what? To the instructions. We know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal. So, to produce my testimony, what must I do? I must know who my man of God is. I, I, I want to dwell here a little bit because a lot of you, you don't know me. I was there, Pastor Ogo. That's why you can be told who your pastor is by the devil. I want to show you something. Go to Matthew 16. Because this thing annoys me. Because I walk with people for years. And they don't know me still. I mean, I said to someone the other day. And I think I said it on Wednesday. I said, you'll never get a good recommendation from your ex-girlfriend. Your ex-girlfriend will never recommend you for anything good. An ex-church member will never say anything good about me. That's why they are ex. And at the same time, Lucifer, who was thrown out of heaven, will never say anything good about God. I mean, just common sense, not even spirituality. So how do you go and get a recommendation about your current father from a former church member? And that's what a lot of you do. That's why you don't really believe. Because you are listening to me with one ear and with another ear you are listening to a former church member. So you, are, you, have, you have the tenth gift of the spirit, the gift of suspicion. You are always suspicious. Always suspicious. And you know the amazing thing is, there are miracles that God has used me to work in your life. Never mind someone. Never mind someone who you can say, ah, pangwe atengwa, in court. I can't consult the devil to get information about God. You need to know who your pastor is. Matthew 16. Give me from verse 13. Daughter, read for me, Isabel. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea, right. Philippi, uh -huh. he asked his disciples, saying, What did he ask his disciples? Who do men say that I, <laughs> the son of men, am? <laughs> <laughs> who do men say? That is a serious question. Who asked the question? Jesus. He was trying to help his disciples. He said, who do they say that I am? Now, what did they say? Carry on. Verse 14. Uh -huh. So they said, uh -huh. some say John the Baptist, right. some Elijah, uh -huh. and others Jeremiah. Now, question. How many, th how many things have been said already? 
Three. How many things have been said already? So people will say different things. So if you believe that is Jeremiah one day, and then again, oh, oh no, he's John the Baptist. Watch it, foot. And then, oh no, he's what? Elijah. Which one do you want to believe? Some say you are this one. Some say you are this one. Some say you are that. It's a very important question. It will make sense in a minute. And some say you are one of the what? The prophets. Okay, carry on. Verse 15. Uh -huh. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Now, before we even get into that, listen to this. Jesus did not say, ah, how can they say that? <laughs> he didn't even get into the discussion. He moved on. And when you move on, you move on to something more important. What is the more important thing? Who do you? You who lives with me. Who do you say that I am? I don't need anyone else to tell me. I can't have someone outside to tell me who my wife is. Read on. Verse 16, uh -huh. Simon Peter answered and said, uh -huh. you are the Christ, uh -huh. the son of the living God. You are the Christ. What does you are the Christ mean? It means that he recognized the anointing. He didn't say you are the Jesus. No. He said you are the Christ, Christ, the Christos, the anointed one and his anointing. So he called him by the anointing. So until you call me by the grace, you will not experience the grace. He didn't say you are Mary's son. If you study Mark chapter 6, those who got no miracles, they called him Mary's son. They called him what? Mary's son. Peter did not say you are Mary's son. Though Peter knew that he was Mary's son. He said, you are the Christ. Christ is not Jesus' same name. Oh, someone said, oh, yes. Christ is, means the anointed one and his anointing. So Peter recognized him by his anointing. That's why Peter is the one who preached on the day of Pentecost. Read on. Verse 17. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Carry on. In other words, he knew his backing. Look at me, look at me. He knew where Jesus got his power. Mm. He knew where Jesus got his power. Not only are you, the, are you anointed, but I know where you got your anointing from. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. He answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You are apostle, the son of bishop. Amen. So I know where you get your power. Amen. Are you getting it? In other words, there's a track record. Yes. So you need to know your man of God after the anointing he exhibits. Next verse. Jesus answered and said to him, uh -huh. Blessed are you, Simon. Where was that blessing before? That means as your father, I can't bless you until you know who I am. Can you see where the mistake is now? Until you know who I am, I can't bless you. If you are still at the, some say you are Jonah, some say you are Jeremiah, some say you are the, the prophet. Some say you are one of those guys. Some say you are. Some, if you are still at the, some say, I can't bless you. I like, I, I, like what, I like what he said. Listen to this. Hansu, who do you say? Pasei panenyayap. In other words, you have to keep saying, He is my man of God. He is sent for me. He is anointed for me. God has sent him as a deliverer into you have to keep saying it you have to keep saying and you know you eventually believe what you keep saying you can't truly be blessed by a man you don't know who he is that's right there and blessed are you Simon by Jonah huh? for what flesh and blood has not revealed this to you 
Pastor, what do you know what he's saying? He's saying, don't listen to flesh and blood. <laughs> you are waiting for flesh and blood to tell you about your spiritual father. If he's a spiritual father, why don't you ask the Holy Spirit? He is saying, Peter, in and of yourself. Jesus was saying, Peter, I know you. You, Peter. I know your misbehavior. In fact, Jesus didn't even give the credit to Peter. He said, this revelation you're about to hear, Peter, I'll see you. <laughs> it can only be the Holy Ghost. But he was teaching us, if you want to know about your spiritual parents, ask the Holy Ghost. Ask the Holy Ghost. Ask the one who sent them. If you want to know about Mercedes, what do you do? You ask the manufacturer. You don't go to Toyota to inquire about Mercedes. We are working on how to produce a testimony. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but who? My father who is where? In heaven. Give me the next verse. Here's where the revelation is now. And I also say to you that you are Peter. So when you know who I am, I can also tell you who you are. Oh, you didn't get it. You didn't get it. You didn't get it. He now said, now you are this. And it's stuck. You, you see, if, if I say to you, do you know Simon Bar Jonah? You're like, I don't buy beer. <laughs> Am I right? If I just say today, today I'm, I'm talking about Simon Bar Jonah. You're like, ah, I don't, I don't buy beer. But if I say today, I want to share something about Peter. How many know Peter in the Bible? So in other words, it is what Jesus then called him that was then established. But that only happened after he believed. After he believed. After he believed. You have to believe and you have to know. This is my pastor. This is my mother. Are you understanding me? You are the one who has to know who your pastor is. Otherwise, the devil will come and tell you what you think he is. So after you know the man of God, the man of God also knows you after the spirit. Read on. He says, and on this what? On this what? Rock. On what rock? On this rock. The rock is the word. Huh? On this rock. Somebody say the rock. What is the rock? The word. What word is he talking about? He says, on this rock I'll build my church. What word is he talking about? The word on knowing who Jesus is. For many years we thought it was the rock on this Peter I will build my church. No, Jesus did not build the church on Peter. He built the church on the revelation of who the man of God is. So he says on the revelation of understanding, the anointing upon your pastor, on that understanding I will build the church. So as long as there's misunderstanding, the church cannot be built. Because the church will always be questioning, questioning, questioning. This is sure it is. Go go Jesus and I'll And I will also say this to you that you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church. Say my church. Who's talking here? Who's talking here? No, not is it not such poor as church. He said it's what? It's my church. Somebody says Jesus church. Say, this is Jesus' church. That's why when we pray here, we don't say in the name of Chipoera. We say in the name of the one who owns the church. He says, it is my church. I might have been the founder, but it is his church. Amen. Am I talking to somebody here? Somebody says, Jesus' church. So he says, it is my church. I mean, there's, there's, there's a, a, a level of authority on those words. I will build my church. Listen to this. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What, what is he talking about when he's talking about the gates of hell? He's talking about there are powers of darkness which are called the spirits of death and hell. Let me teach you this. The spirits of death and hell are the spirits that want you to backslide. So there are spirits targeting, targeting your backsliding. Those are the spirits of death and hell. These are called gates, spiritual gates. 
The enemy wants you in hell. This is not a mystery. It's, it's very simple. The enemy wants you in hell. So he will do whatever it takes to cause you to come out of the church. Next thing is your backsliding. The gates of hell. So you need to pray against the gates of hell. And Mazano, we are after the gates of hell. What does he call the gates of hell? Misbehavior of church members. Those are called gates of hell. Jesus called your misbehavior gates. He said you will not prevail. Jesus said <laughs> he will make sure you will not prevail. So anytime you fight the church, you will not prevail. And guess who makes sure? Jesus. I'll prove it to you. I'll prove it to you. By the Bible, I, I love the Bible. The Bible proves itself. In the book of Acts chapter number 4, I think verse 34, 35, 36, somewhere there, the church prayed. Because the Lord behold their threatenings. The church was content because, because Saul was attacking the church. He was attacking the church. He was killing uh, 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 my disciples. All sorts of things he was doing. All sorts of drama he ate when I saw. And they prayed. Behold, they what? Threatenings. Turn to your neighbor and say, never threaten the church of Jesus. That's Acts chapter 4, did it? Acts chapter 9, what happened? There was a meeting that happened between Jesus and Saul on the road to Damascus. There was no other person there than who? Than Jesus. Jesus, he met with who? He had a one-on-one. -on -one. I pray for a one-on-one -on -one for every person attacking this church. I pray for a one. They must have a one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. And listen to this. They, they had that one-on-one. -on -one and Master, immediately he knew it was Jesus. Listen to the question that Jesus asked in Acts chapter number 9. Hans, why are you persecuting me? He didn't say, why are you persecuting the apostles? So whatever you do, because he was attacking the apostles. So when you attack the apostles, you are attacking Jesus. You've got to be careful. You've got to be careful. When you speak against the apostle, you are speaking against Jesus. Because church in the end, they are Jesus. Never forget that. He says, I will make sure that your misbehavior, your gates, they will not prevail. That means that Jesus now starts to fight your prosperity. That's why you find people who talk against the church, they never prevail. You try and do a business deal, it never prevails. You get into marriage, it never prevails. Why? Because you are fighting the church of Jesus. Are you catching this? We are working on you producing your what? Your testimony. So you can't produce a testimony fighting the church. And I also say to you that you are Peter. Do you understand that you are? Huh? In other words, the man of God can say you are a businessman now. Amen. You were not before. But because you believed, you are now this. Amen. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the next verse. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. After you know there are keys I am authorized to give you. There are keys to service stations. There are keys to hotels. There are keys to commercial buildings. Because Jesus was standing in the, in, in, in the position of an apostle. And he can give you that. And whatever Jesus gave you, I can give you greater. That's Bible. That's Bible. He says, greater works than these shall you do. Praise the name of the Lord. Receive your keys today. I said, receive your keys today. That car, receive your keys today. That house, receive your keys today. I said, receive your keys today. I don't have to lay hands on you. Receive your keys today. Ah, you will be coming back with a testimony after the order of Baba Moyo in the name of Jesus. I said, receive your keys. Wherever doors are shut, receive your keys. I said, receive your keys. And listen to what the keys do. Keys to the kingdom. And whatever you bind, that means Iwewe, if you are a true son of mine, whatever you bind, in the same way, because you have made up your mind to be a son, you will have the same authority. I said you will have the same authority. Whatever you bind shall remain bound, and whatever you loose shall remain loosed. Hallelujah. So it takes keys to succeed. Hallelujah. And keys are not just principles. Keys is a level of spiritual authority where when you speak, some things must happen. And I decree over your life, when you speak, some things must happen. I said when you speak, some things must happen. When you declare some things, they must happen. 
I prophesy they will happen. Whatever was not happening for you shall happen going forward. I decree it will happen going forward. Pese paruku singiru play, receive the keys. Pese paruku rambitwa, receive the keys. I will give you the keys. Because you believe, I will give you the keys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me Romans 1. Romans 1 verse 11. This is so important. For I long to see you when I was away in South Africa. That I may come back and impart some spiritual gift to you. So that what? In the end you may be what? So you need to believe when I impart. When I say the keys to your new house. The keys to your new job. The keys to a new level, the keys to your elevation, the keys to your promotion. You need to have a living amen. I said the keys to a new dimension, the keys to your palace, the keys to your mansion. You know what he told me to tell you? He said you'll be called for, like Joseph was called for. There are people who are being called for. This week you will receive the call. There are calls and there are co- there are calls you've been waiting for. This Sunday morning, I decree the call is coming. I decree the call is coming. I call it the money call. La riba zotama haya. I call it the money call. Le rama zotala mahaya. Eleven a.m. Musika zufungira ako inongorira. The call you've been waiting for. The million dollar phone call you've been waiting for. The call for your house. The call for your paperwork. It must come. I impart that grace in the name of Jesus. I said I impart that grace in the name of Jesus. I prophesy it upon your life. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. That call from the one who will marry you. That call is coming in the name of Jesus. I said that call is coming. That email is coming. That WhatsApp is coming. The one you've been believing God for, I said is coming. Joseph was stuck in a prison. And the call came. He was not even expecting it. It came. I'm telling you, child of God, that life-changing call is coming. <laughs> Pastor Albert, you know what Job said? As in a job, I will wait on the Lord until my change comes. You know what he was saying? He was saying, I'm not going to go to a witch doctor for change. I will wait on God. God's timing is the best. And God is doing it in this season. Your call is coming. I said that call is coming. The way even your husband sees you will change. Yeah, the call is coming in the name of Jesus. Acha penyer wapanyoan. Ma zato majo taliba haya. That acha penyer wapanyoan. I decree over your life that call is coming. La da bazo talira bahaya. These are tongues of houses. That house you want in Blawayo is yours. That house is yours. Receive it now. 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 Listen, there are people who buy houses before this year is over. You are one of them. You are one of them. You are one of them. Who says you can buy a house this year? You are one of them. It shall come to pass. All I need is your faith. This testimony should have given you your faith. I just need you to believe. He said, they shall build. They shall build. Who told you you can't have a house before this year is over? Who told you that? Man, Amazon, Talamahaya. 
You know, I'm reminded of something by the Holy Spirit. Adam and Eve, they were in the garden. Now they were naked. And you know what, what God said to them? He says, who told you? Who told you that you were naked? He, God, God, even God wants to know who that person is. Who told you you can't make it? Who, who told you you can't get married? Who told you you can't have a wedding? Who told you that? Who told you you can't afford it? In other words, you were saying what you were told is a lie. Be careful of who tells you things. If you are looking for a Satanist, look at the one who told you. <laughs> who told Adam and Eve that they were naked? It was the devil. Watch someone who tells you. Be careful of the one who comes to tell you. Hallelujah. Because you'll be robbed of your breakthrough. Your breakthrough is, I can see it in the horizon. It's not far. Weeping may have endured from January to July, but joy is coming in August. As you hit one August, the month of new beginnings, I want for there to be a fresh start between you and your God. I said a fresh start. I said a fresh start. I prophesy a fresh start. I said a fresh start. These are testimony producing tongues. I said they are testimony producing tongues. In the name of Jesus. John chapter 14. Please be seated. I'm almost done. This thing of believing is so important. Are you in John 14? Not verse 1. Verse number 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give me from verse 7. Thank you, Isabel. Anzi. If you had known me, uh -huh. you would have known my father also. If you know me, you would know the one who's backing me. Are you seeing it? So you get testimonies by knowing who your father is and knowing your father's father. Very important. If you had known me, you would have known my father. Right? Also, right? And from now on, you know him and have seen him. So when you see me, this will sound like heresy to some of you, but when you see me, you have seen Jesus. Stop singing, but shout like Jesus. Jesus is here, now, here, here. I always say, and the greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. When you come to church, you must have this opinion that I'm going to see Jesus. When the man of God is standing there, he's speaking what? The oracles of Jesus. How do you know it's Jesus? Because when I stand here, I say in the name of so it's equivalent to Jesus coming and visiting you in the church. Are you getting this somebody? Hey, I will see Jesus. It's okay. Believe what you like. Next verse. Verse 8. Uh -huh. Philip said to him, uh -huh. Lord, show us the Father uh -huh. and it is sufficient for us. Carry on. Verse 9. Uh -huh. Jesus said to uh -huh. him, have I been with you so long? Jesus was frustrated now. Philip was to say, Inga dakuza dinini 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 Basically, I mean, to bring it to your language. Yes, I got this one. Baba, who denga? It's your ban up. You wouldn't trust the G. No, he's saying, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Amen. That's what Jesus was saying. Please carry on. Have I been with you so long, uh -huh. and yet you have not known me? You have not known Kutindi Nangwari. Are you getting it? You need this. See, this thing of knowing your Father is important, and knowing the backing of your Father. Please carry on. He who has seen me uh -huh. has seen the Father. There you go. He who has seen me has seen the Father. Carry on. So how can you say, show us the Father? Uh -huh. Do you not believe that I am in the Father uh -huh. and the Father in me? There you go. Is it making sense now? Is it making sense now? Carry on. The words that I speak to you, uh -huh. I do not speak on my own authority. Right. But the Father who dwells in me uh -huh. does the work. He does the work. The Father who dwells where? In me. Does the what? 
So you're saying, show me the Father. No, the, fa the Father is here. Amen. The Father is here because the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Are you getting it now? Please carry on. Verse 11. Uh -huh. Believe me uh -huh. that I am in the Father right. and the Father in me. Uh -huh. Or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. For the sake of the miracles, believe. Amen. Read on. This is the part I want to get to. Verse 12. Uh -huh. Most assuredly, I say to you, right. he who believes in me. Right. Who believes in me here? Who believes in me? Okay, good. Who believes in me? A few hands down, but it's fine. The, if you believe in me, what happens? The works that I do. The, the miracles I do. What will happen? He will do also. <laughs> so you can't produce supernatural results if you don't believe in your spiritual father. So when the devil is fighting our relationship, he's fighting you working miracles. Second Chronicles 20 verse 20. My second last scripture and I'll close. Oh, I need you to get this. Never allow anyone or anything to make you fight your faith in your man of God. Never. Because he's fighting your level. The level at which you stop believing your man of God, you've reached your plateau. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness to Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe the Lord your God, you shall be established. But believe his prophets and you shall prosper. So based on that scripture, if I was the devil, if I wanted to keep you poor, I would fight you believing your men of God. I don't even have to fight you believing in God. You can believe in God, but if you don't believe in the one he sends, you can't prosper. Can you see how the devil infiltrates the church with poverty? You become a suspicious person in the church. Hey, may you not be like that. Ah, may you believe when you are told. I said, may you believe when you are told. I decree, may you believe when you are told. Results are coming your way in the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. The last part, if you want to prosper in church, if you want to produce a testimony, I'll give you the last one. Be a person of kingdom service. There's no one who was ever in the Bible and was great without service. Can I show you a scripture you've never seen before? Psalm 105 verse 42. How many believe Abraham was a great man? Can I show you what made Abraham great? For he, talking about God, remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. 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 Abraham was a servant. Abraham left his father's house. This way. And he left quickly. There was nothing to pack. The Bible does not record Abraham packing anything. And for God to say, I will make you great, means he was a nobody. And we don't hear people disputing. Hey, what are going to That means they were saying good riddance. But God made him great because that's chapter 12 of Genesis. Chapter 13, Abraham was rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. Chapter 14, Abraham, he had a whole army. Anger never 318. Servants. Right? Now, he, he, <laughs> two, two chapters later, he now had 318 servants. He went to win a war. He came back with the tithe. Hello? <laughs> Chapter 15, God, he spoke more greatness on him. He, God kept speaking and speaking. Chapter 17, ch chapter 15, he made a covenant with God. Chapter 17, he made another covenant. Chapter 18, Sarah gets pregnant. Chapter 8, the same chapter 18, they, 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 they looked after strangers. Chapter 22, Genesis 22, God, God asked for first fruits. And then what did he say after that? Now I will bless you. Ah. 
There are things that God has done for you and he has not started. That's what I mean. He says, now, now. He was talking, Abraham was now a billionaire. And God says, Abraham, now I'll bless you. You have brought Isaac, now I'll bless you. He says, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. Because you obeyed my voice. Not because you attended church. Because you obeyed my voice. Abraham. Kutupiwe, you are not the international blessing. Ya Abraham, you, there is something you must do. There is something you must do. Lord, what must I do? That is your question. What must I do? Revelation is not just some nice words put together. Uh, revelation is discovering the truth you need to obey to get the results. Do you know the revelation? Do you know the revelation? Do revelation? When God shows you what to do, and when you do it, your struggle is over. There's something you have to do. Find out. Lord, what should I do? Chichi no fana kuitwa. Kuti zvangu zvite sei zvifambe. that the grass withers and the flower fades but your word is eternal. Breaking the chains, unlocking your destiny.